Make sure you check out our online store where we work with our graphic designer to create stunning garment and product designs that feature a wide variety of aircraft types such as British fighters, World War II aircraft, American bombers, Russian fighters and much more. You can pick your favourite designs and personalise any items within our Redbubble store that range from clothing right the way through to stationery. All of our designs feature our logo so you can show your support for the channel while getting a quality product. You can head to our website aircrewinterview.tv and click store or go to redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash AC interview. Thank you and enjoy. So Duke, when did you first become interested in aviation? Well, I think it was the, the first memory I have of aircraft is, is uh, from when I was like 10 or something. Uh, I had a friend that was really into drawing aircraft and he drew uh, a lot of vegans from just uh, the silhouettes oh. from the side for some reason. I don't know why. It, I mean, it's <laughs> a very old memory. So, and I, 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 I suck at a lot of things, but I, I suck extra much at drawing. But so I don't know why I drew at all, but I drew a lot of aircraft at the time. So I knew how the vegan looked like. So and I think I, that always made me when I saw a, a vegan fly overhead, which they did occasionally in Sweden. I kind of, oh, wow, that's that's an aircraft, and that's cool. It sounds cool and everything. Yeah. But then, yeah, didn't uh, didn't think much about it until I was a conscript uh, in the Army. And then uh, it was kind of, what, yeah, I've always been interested in being a fighter pilot maybe and probably just want to see, can I be a fighter pilot? I mean, you know, can I do all the tests? And there was a lot of rumors going around uh in in um, when you were a conscript well you have to be like uh, einstein and you have to be uh you know fit like uh, an olympic uh, runner and everything but it, of course it wasn't like that but so i wanted to try so when i came there i didn't know much about the air force at all but i did the test and i got in so yeah that's it so yeah so what year did you actually join the air force I joined the Air Force in '95 in the mid uh, middle of '95, I think it was uh, September or something. Mm -hmm. And then it was a couple of months uh, that we did with uh, with all parts of the Air Force, uh, the technicians and everything. And then in January '96, I started flying. Awesome. So let's talk talk about some of the aircraft you started training on, which I think is is it the SK60? And was that like you went yeah. straight to jets, didn't you? Yes, we in Sweden we go straight to jets. A uh, couple, maybe 10, 15 years before that, we had a, a, a period we started with uh, propellers. But then, uh, since the the mid eighties, I think we went straight to the jets. And the SK six, as you said, it's called the Saab one hundred five as well. It's a really right. old aircraft. Uh, I think it was uh, built in the late sixties or something, uh, or at least it was. Uh, that, that's when it was drawn. So, what would you like to fly? Well, it's a straight wing aircraft, so uh, it, it's it cuts very well through the air. Uh, it has, uh, at least uh, when I started, the, the engines were well. They kind of made a lot of noise, but they didn't make <laughs> a lot of power. So, so uh, it was, uh, and they had a terrible lag. It was like when you um, uh, try to get, to uh, get some power, it took a couple of seconds before you actually got it. So, oh wow, that, okay. Yeah, so that was, it was really hard to fly, you know, uh, uh, really close formation with it because you have to almost be psychic. You have to know what the other guys is, are going to do before before they do it. So that was was quite special about that aircraft. And of course, it's really old, so it's just uh, you know analog gauges. So, yeah, of so, course. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so what kind of training would you be flying uh, in the SK sixty? Is it formation, or were you uh, practicing air to air, air to ground at this time? Well, the the, the basic training was two year, you can say. Uh, the first year is more basic training. You you learn how to fly the aircraft. The first couple, maybe twenty five sorties or so, you you basically learn how to land and start. Uh, after 25 hours, I think it was, then you can fly for yourself. It's a side-by-side -side aircraft, so if the first 25, you had a teacher next to you. Mm -hmm. And then you had approximately every second sort you, had, you did with a, with a teacher on the right and the, the other sort you did on, your, on yourself then, by yourself. So the first year was about that. You had some uh, close formation flying uh, in the first year and... Uh, 
but basically learn how to handle the aircraft in all situations. And then the second year was the tactical part. Uh, the first uh, half of that year was uh, in uh, the southern part of Sweden. Then we moved to the middle part of Sweden to Uppsala wing mm. and did uh, advanced uh, tactical training. And then we did, uh, you know, uh, BFM, basic fighter maneuvering uh, and, and uh, ACM uh, up to two versus two. Wow. And yeah, in that uh, aircraft. And it was just totally manual. So you have to basically have many eyes uh, looking at all the aircraft and uh, have to keep every aircraft track it somewhere in the back of your head. <laughs> but, but we did uh, everything. So that's just the fighter part of it. But we did uh, recce flying as well, you know, uh, yeah. real low level, 30 meters uh, on the low level. And uh, some, uh, I remember one type of recce mission that was kind of fun to fly. You, you, you flew over roads. So you, back and forth over the road and try to follow the road and uh, f uh, yeah just uh, see count for instance how many red cars are there on this road and you have to fly on 30 meters back and forth <laughs> no, it's kind of crazy but it was good fun awesome fun i'm sure but uh, yeah so how long did you spend on the type before you got posted onto your frontline aircraft uh, it was two years on the SK-60, and then uh, after that, it was actually on the the F-16. What F-16 means, uh, the the 16 wing in Sweden, not the aircraft F-16. But it was on the same wing uh, in, in Uppsala that you just uh, moved a couple of hundred meters to the to the to the Viggen. Yeah, so we're going to talk about the the Viggen here, Duke. Obviously, it's an absolutely magnificent aircraft. But uh, after your training, what aircraft did you want to go on to? Was it the Viggen? Yeah, well, at, at the time, it, we had the drag, uh, the, the Draken, uh, maybe it's called the Dragon uh, in English, but that's what it means in yeah. Swedish. Uh, the Dragon, so, so that was kind of the old aircraft, and the Viggen was the new aircraft, especially the Fighter Viggen, which was a new version of the Viggen that came out uh, just maybe 10 years before that. So that was the most modern uh, aircraft we had in, in Sweden at the time. So, of course, I wanted to fly the most modern version. And... and uh, at the beginning in flight school, I kind of wanted to, you know, uh, blow up stuff. Uh, so I wanted to go to, to uh, you know, the strike, uh, strike begin. But then the other guys explained to me, uh, uh, thankfully, put me straight. So, so uh, I actually wanted to go into the fighter vegan instead. So. Absolutely. So what were your first thoughts in the vegan? Like when you got up close, like it must have been like, wow, this is amazing. Yes, it's very powerful. It's, it's got that posture that is quite powerful, uh, and it's made out of steel, of course, uh, which is which is good. Steel is uh, it's a it's a good uh, material. So uh, it was kind of um, yeah powerful. And it's had the massive engine is also something that uh, it, it looks even mass more massive maybe than it is because it has the big re reversing thing yeah. in the back, so it can actually close some lids and and turn the jet stream forward. So that kind of makes it a, a big part. And, and I think that single thing just weights one ton. So a, a thousand wow. kilos, just that thing. So, so it's, it's really, uh, re that's a, a, a thing that really stands out with the Viggen. Yeah, so let's get, uh, let's talk about your ground training on the aircraft. What was it like? And did you have simulators at the time? We had simulators and it was they were quite good. They were even moving simulators, but we kind of turn usually turn that moving thing off because it made you mostly uh, uh, kind of uh, sick. So it was good, good fun to try a couple of times, but you, you still want the feedback uh, from how much G, G's you you pull. So you you, you still connect your G suit to the, the simulator, so you, you get the pressure in the G suit. So that that's how you know how many G's you're pulling. And that's that's enough. And it, the simulator was really good. It felt like almost like flying without the acceleration. Yeah. And yeah, did the SK sixty like prepare you well to go into to like you know like a magnificent aircraft like the Viggen, or like was it like underwhelming coming from the SK seven uh, SK sixty sorry uh, to the Viggen? No, it was kind of a, a leap forward when it comes to to being more modern. The the SK sixty so. Well, it's ancient, and it's really you have to do everything by hand. Uh, it, it doesn't have, a, it didn't at the time at least, didn't have GPS or anything. So you have to have your map, holding your map, uh, following, trailing with your thumb, 
Uh, but the, the, the fighter vegan ha- had a, a electronic map. So that kind of made everything really, really simple. Now you know always where you are. It wasn't GPS, but it had an internal uh, yeah. system that basically knew where it was. So obviously, like, yeah, the vegan was in many roles, but like, what was the role of the vegan that you were going on to? Was it just basically air to air? That was after air. It's called the JA, uh, which means the J stands for fighter in, in Sweden and A stands for strike. But the, the A should be very, very small in that uh, JA-37, which is the designation. So it was a fighter, uh, fighter aircraft for sure. Mm-hmm. There, there were other versions. Uh, you had a strike version and you had a recce version as well. So w- at the time we had three versions of the Vigan and they d- did their parts, so to say. Mm-hmm. So now it was uh, purely air trail, especially in our squadron. We kind of prouded ourselves to be a lot, almost exclusively air trail. Yeah, is it the sport of kings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Previously on the SK-60, everything was kind of theoretical because, well, you 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 were taught to to basic fighter maneuvers or, or do recce and and all that. But now you came to a real squadron that had a real mission. And at the time, the the bad guys came from east, so uh, and we kind of practiced. Uh, I wouldn't say against, but we practiced uh, against the scenario that we thought was most like, uh, likely to happen, and that was the coming a lot of our aircraft from east. And we most of the times we just tried to practice how to shoot down as many as their aircraft as possible. Yeah. So how did the aircraft handle and what were its strengths and weaknesses? It handled surprisingly well. It was really easy to fly. It wasn't carefree maneuvering, but it had a really good sound feedback system. So you knew how how much uh, angle of attack you you had and you also knew how many Gs you had with different tones and different uh, frequencies. Basically, and you had a knife in your uh, in your uh, stick as well. That if you if you try to take too much, you kind of uh, it slammed you in the, in your hand. So you kind of wow. instinctive, instinctively uh, just moved the uh, joystick forward. So it was, and it felt a lot lighter than it was than it looked. Yeah, because it, l- it looked like a big beast, didn't it? Like when uh, I've seen uh, an air shows like you know n- numerous times, and it looked like a heavy beast. Yeah, it, it it is a heavy beast. It was I, I should say it's really easy to handle. I mean, it it followed you really well. But at the time, it all it also is a very big brake. So that's what you have. You have you're holding a big handbrake basically. So it was really powerful. It accelerated forward really well if you had low al- angle of attack. Yeah. But as, as soon as you tried to pull some G's, it basically it it, it stopped in the air, which is mm-hmm. kind of you you can do that. Uh, uh, use that to do, to your advantage as well trying, when you're trying to get behind someone and break really fast. You, <laughs> yeah. you could actually do a split S and get out on the bottom side with lower speed. So, Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the cockpit. What was that environment like for you as a pilot? Was it a comfortable cockpit? Yeah, it was really good. Uh, it had still, I mean, at the time, it was, uh, I mean, drawn in the mid 80s or so so it has a lot had a lot of analog gauges uh, but it had a, a big i think it was eight by six inch uh, screen it was oh. vector based and just one uh, color but i mean it showed all the important stuff and we ha- also had uh, a fighter link on that one a four by uh, four fighter link so and it was really fast so you could see all your other aircraft in your group and it took maybe a second or so so you can see when they're turning and what they have locked on and uh, so on and so on. And then you also could get from the fighter controller. They could send you a lot of information who you're going to uh, go in and uh, uh, launch against and everything. So it had a really good system, well uh, well thought through system. Yeah, that seems quite advanced for the, I'm guessing, because I think you were, was it 95 you went on to the biggin? That seems to yeah. be quite advanced for that time. Oh yeah, we were way ahead when it came to Lynx at the time, and that was—I was, uh, don't think maybe they had Lynx sixteen at the time, but it was definitely not as fast. Not not even now. I think it was uh, Lynx sixteen is as fast as our fighter link was at the time. Yeah. So, what was your first uh, frontline squadron, and where were you based? 
that, that was my first uh, uh, frontline squadron, the F-16 wing in Uppsala. So I kind of it was supposed to just do the conversion training to the Viggen there, but uh, and and then go north into Sweden uh, right. to Astesund. But then they asked us if we could, well, humbly, can you th- rethink your decision and uh, stay in the Uppsala wing instead? And I was late 20s and uh, staying close to Stockholm was kind of like, yay. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> I can stay. <laughs> I can stay. I'll, I'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. What, so what kind of uh, weapons or munitions uh, on your squadron could the Viggen uh, carry at the time? Uh, it could. Uh, a later version... The, not when I started, this just could uh, have this. I think it's called the Sky Flash. Okay. Uh, my jogging my old memories here, but it was a, a an air to air missile. It was short range, I, I guess, with today's uh, uh, distances. Uh, but it was okay uh, at the time. But but we were massively un, underpowered when it compared to the the flankers on the east east side. So we basically had to be maybe three against one flanker in order to uh, to take them on but in a later version of the the fighter weekend we got the amram so then it was kind of even uh, even yeah exactly yeah and we're going to get into this uh, here Duke, because it's one of our viewers favorite questions how did the vegan fare in dact acm against the types of the time well I, I, I wish i really could answer that but at the time in sweden was really Kind of, I would say isolated because we we were uh, without any. Uh, we were not part of NATO, and uh, so so, and we kind of kept to ourselves. Right. So we didn't have a lot of uh, 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 DACT uh, exercises at the time. And I, I, with a Viggen, I haven't flown against flown against uh, any other aircraft. Though I have flown against the Gripen because uh, the later part of my Viggen experience overlap with the. Uh, Sweden having the Gripen, yeah, and the Gripen is kind of similar to the F sixteen, and I can, I can say that unfortunately uh, the Viggen versus the Gripen, though the Viggen didn't stand much of a chance when it oh. comes to at least when it came to no at yeah. least when it came to uh, to the the BFM the, the or the ACM. We, we did have one thing though because we still had the the fighter link the four by uh, yeah. four uh, fighter link for the group, which the first. Uh, versions of the Gripen didn't have, so th- that was kind of uh, uh, an advantage we had. We could actually uh, be better at BVR beyond visual range combat, especially yeah. uh, with the aircraft that didn't have the the fighter link at the start. The 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 Vigan pilots at the time was of course were, were of course a lot better than the Gripen pilots. So even though they had a better aircraft, we could sometimes win against them because we just were better pilots we thought or so does every fighter pilot think i think <laughs> absolutely and i forgot to uh show you this uh when i was in sweden this like this is off like script here uh Duke, yeah. but i got given this uh when i interviewed the pilot and uh if you can see that bit like is that silver yeah. does that mean a thousand hours i can't remember like but you, i, you I think uh i think that's uh uh, less than thousand hours. It's gold when you come over thousand hours. Oh, I think. right. Okay. It's golden. Right. Yeah. That patch is for. Uh, uh, the, we had a different patch for the fighter rig, and it looks almost the same, but it's a uh, some lines are just a little bit different. So that was the general vegan uh, patch, and then we had a fighter vegan patch as well. Yeah, and I've noticed like um, same with like, um, you know like um, uh, vegan pilots, Gripen pilots. They seem to wear it that way. Is that correct? Down. Yeah, I, I, I wore it that way. Why is that? Just like like on a side note here. I don't know. It's, it's, I, I guess someone started wearing it like that. and <laughs> that, of... was, that was just a thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So how often would you fly in the Viggen each week? Uh, we had approximately 140 hours per year. And right. the, the, the story was... Uh, we we have a, had a big advantage because we were really close to our exercise area. So basically, oh, okay. five minutes after takeoff, it was fight on, and then we could fight and, and then just go home. So we had a lot of uh, meat, so to say, in, in the exercise. So, but about 140 hours, uh, at least in the in the late 90s, and then well, the flying time uh, unfortunately unfortunately was reduced uh, over the years because of money problems and so on. Of course, yeah. But then the all sorties were about, I think the average shorted time is 45 minutes. 
So I, I guess that translates to about 200 sorties per year. And so it felt like you flew one or two sorties per day, uh, basically. Pretty cool. Uh, yeah. And next question, you probably have like so many stories here, uh, Duke, but uh, can you share a, maybe a memorable story that sticks out in your mind uh, flying the Viggen? Yeah, I think uh, the one that I usually come to think about is the uh, the flight where we're out in the in the sea uh, east of uh, Sweden, and we've actually did some. I think it was ACM, and I, I got for some reason I got a a bit of maybe twenty thirty percent uh, extra fuel left. So I thought, and then the other guys were going home, and I stayed a little bit, and well. It was, this was getting boring so well <laughs> i'll try to uh, see what kind of speed i can get get up into because uh, for the sorry i i was allowed to go supersonic oh, wow. so well uh, let's try that and uh, so i full afterburn and, and and it was just accelerating like crazy and uh, some some aircraft they were a bit different but this aircraft was maybe just been in for service or something because the mac just kept on uh, coming and i was like well, this is fast, and it was 1.5, 1.6, and I kind of Bloody got, hell. I think, a little bit, you know, focused on the on the the Mac meter because suddenly I, I find myself almost over the Stockholm Archipelago. Wow! And it was like I think it was 1.86 or something, and I like, wow, this is uh, uh, now I really have to. I'm really moving, and this is uh, even though I was uh, above uh, ten thousand meters or thirty thousand feet, I d- it could kind of make a big uh, mm. bang. So uh, <laughs> exactly, and and so so I started braking, and and at the time you you can't pull too many G's because it was kind of limited because of uh, when you go really high supersonic with the rigging, it was kind of limited uh, because of you know powers to the ailerons. So I, I didn't get my speed down. Uh, as I was had planned to, so I was kind of way too fast in over land, uh, uh, and I thought when I was when I was uh, landing, I thought, well, I'm gonna You're get at least fired. <laughs> if I'm not going to jail, that would be good because I've probably <laughs> broken every window, you know, in the in Swedish archipelago. Yeah, and so I went in, and I kind of like a you know uh, like a dog crawled into a, a corner or something. I felt like ashamed. And not a one, not one single phone call. Really? Which was like, yeah, I, I guess there was some kind of inversion or something, or with the weather. I don't know why, but n- not a single call, and nobody noticed. And I didn't do anything formally wrong. It was just uh, uh, probably I was quite close to to land, but not over land at the time. So, yeah, it was wow. lucky. Yeah. What a story. <laughs> Like, I mean, like, me being a nav geek, I would have loved to hear that, like, sonic boom. But, uh, yeah, there's people, like, might have complained. But you got lucky there, Duke, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I was really lucky. So, uh, yeah, so how many hours did you get on the Viggen? Uh, I think it was about 600 hours I got on the fighter Viggen. Wow. That's, yeah, it's not, that's a fair amount. That's, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fair amount, exactly. But then I, I cut my... Since then, I started on the grip, and after that, so I cut my kind of uh, in in half, uh, where I did half of beginning and half uh, on the grip. And...